Hi, I'm John Rafrano for Boris TV and welcome to the Boris Continuum Complete for Vegas Pro Training Series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at image restoration tools, in particular BCC Smooth Tone and BCC Noise Reduction. These tools can quite often save a shot that would otherwise be unusable. Let's take a look at how we can use them. On this first shot here, I've got a close-up uh, of a young lady. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, wrinkles and uh, a little bit of age spots there. And we're going to use BCC Smooth Tone to just kind of smooth that out and make that shot a little more flattering. Sometimes they call this digital makeup. So we'll go to BCC Colors and Blurs and then take BCC Smooth Tone and drop it on the event. You'll notice at the top there is a, uh, a compare, and we're going to use the compare. In particular, I like the side-by-side -side compare for doing this, so that on the left I'll have the original image, on the right I can see the effects of BCC Smooth Tone. And there are a couple of presets to choose from. Uh, one that has less detail, it's a little smoother. One that has maximum detail, which is a little less smooth. And then there's a smoother preset. But I want to start with the default setting, because I want to show you what all these controls do. The first thing is the method. There are two methods, fastest and faster, which gray out some of the controls and not make them usable. So I want to start with smoother, because this opens up the controls so that we can see how to use this. The radius here, first there's a lock radius, so you can have the X and Y radius be different. Usually you want to use the same radius on your uh, X and Y. The radius is the number of pixels that will be affected by this blur. So the greater the radius, uh, the, the bigger the blur. You'll notice there's not much change as I increase this radius because the radius is tied to this maximum deviation. And that is the setting at which pixels that deviate will be affected. So as I increase maximum deviation, you'll see I get more of a blur here. And if I bring these both uh, up to their maximum, you can see there's quite a blur on this image as compared with this image over here. But one thing you'll notice is that there's still a lot of detail. And in fact, uh, here's the iterations down here. It's how many times you apply this. And normally you just apply it once, but you can apply it multiple times. As I increase that, we really start to get a very blurry image. But even at this extremely blurry state, you can still see the eyes and the mouth. So a lot of detail is retained. So that's what's different about smooth tone as compared to just using something like a Gaussian blur. So let me reset these. And now I'm going to increase the radius uh, just a bit and uh, maybe back off on the maximum deviation. I just want to get a nice smooth effect uh, in here and up here. And it's looking pretty good. I don't want too much of a blur. Now this blur cutoff will determine a threshold at which pixels will no longer be affected. If I bring it all the way down, you'll see there's no blur at all. I usually keep that at the default one. So we'll just use the maximum deviation and the radius here to kind of get a nice smoothing blur. Just a little bit smoother, just a little bit more flattering uh, than it was before. And that's all I really want to do with this. Now I'm going to switch this back from the compare mode. I'm going to go back to the full mode. And I'm going to turn it on and off. What you'll notice is when I turn it off, look at the hair. There's lots of detail up in the hair. And if I turn it on, some of that gets a bit blurry. So the next thing I want to do is use the pixel chooser to decide what gets affected in this image. I'm going to turn the pixel chooser on by going to view chosen pixels. And right now the entire screen is being chosen. I'll go to the pixel chooser region and I'll take a shape. I want to use uh, inside an oval and then take these two points and make them resemble the oval of the face because the face is, a, is good to use an oval to getting faces correct. I'll just move this uh, over until it kind of looks like the face in the middle. I can use the blend region to blur the edges a bit uh, and I can scale it up because that face was a little bit off screen and maybe stretch it just a wee bit uh, in the vertical direction. And now I'm going to turn this on and we'll see that the hair, as I turn this on and off, the hair is no longer being affected and just the center is being affected where the face is. Now the face is moving, this is a video. So the next thing I want to use is the motion tracker to make that mask, that PC region mask, uh, track the face. So I'm going to use track on the fly 
Uh, and one thing I need to do is it's warning me that I have to put my cursor at the beginning of the timeline. Uh, and so I don't want to track quite that much. So I'm going to make this a little smaller just for the sake of the demo. We're going to start there. Uh, you can see my pixel chooser region. And actually, I think I can get away with doing uh, preview half on this. Then I'll go to my tracker center. And I'm going to center that tracker right on the eyes there. And I'm going to use my control key to get really accurate movement. Um, and I might change my search width just a bit, make it a little bit bigger, make my target width just a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to double click this region and do Shift B uh, so that it will track. All right, and right there it lost the it lost the track. That's okay. We're going to go back to a point at which uh, it had a good keyframe. It has a good keyframe there, and so I will move the region that we're going to pre-render. I want to go up and say clear the render cache. I do not want to reset the tracker. I just want to clear the render cache. And then I want to give the timeline the focus and press Shift B again. And so now I've got a nice smooth track. And so I can check that. I've got a smooth track. I can turn off track on the fly and then come down to the apply and say apply that to the pixel chooser and now that pixel chooser oval will map and track the video. So that's using BCC Smooth Tone uh, with the pixel chooser and uh, tracking.